Hello, Lane here. Today I am reading Leif Catches the Wind. Don't forget to stay tuned after this video. There will be another video where Miss Nico will show you an activity that goes along with this book. So let's get started. Hi Leif, here I am in my new house. I feel like I'm really far away from Copenhagen. Mom and dad are still unpacking. They let me set up my weather station first thing. Then we set up the computer so I can email you. Remember, you promised to send me weather information every day. I'll send you a report from here too. Then I'll get my weather website started. Miss you lots and lots, Dana. Just as Leif was about to close his email, a new message popped up on his screen. It was Dana again. I can't wait for your visit next weekend. P.S. Tell Frederick and Joachim hi for me. P.P.S. Did you know this place has a fish pond? Now I know you'll come visit. Leif touched his freckled nose to the cool surface of the glass fish tank next to the desk. Hey, Frederick and Joachim. Dana says hi. Of all his pets, these two Fisk were his favorites because Dana had given them to him on his birthday last year. He had named them after the two princes in the Danish royal family. Leif's mom and his auntie, Dana's mom, were twin sisters and best friends. Ever since Leif and Dana were babies, they had been best friends too. Sometimes Leif thought he and Dana were more like twins than cousins. Just this week, Dana had moved away from Copenhagen to her new home in Alberg. He already missed her a lot, but watching Frederick and Joachim made him feel a little better. Leif turned around and looked at his other fish. There were platus, catfish, goldfish, guppies, tetras, and tigerfish, 40 fish in all, living in five fish tanks. They all seemed healthy, swishing around with glistening scales. Leif drifted around the room, trying to think of something to do. I might as well check the weather readings and report to Dana, he thought. She loved weather watching and forecasting as much as Leif loved raising his pet Fisk. When she heard she would be moving away, Dana managed to turn her fascination with beer into a fun way to keep in touch. Leif, she had announced, let's make a website comparing the weather in Copenhagen to the weather in Aalborg. Maybe we can even collect and post weather reports from other kids across Scandinavia. She had insisted that they use their special handshake to seal his promise to report the weather daily. Leif looked around his room. Before Dana had left, she had given him posters, equipment, and a weather notebook. It's your new weather station, she exclaimed, sweeping some magazines off his desk and making room for the instruments. She had made many of the instruments herself. He checked each of the weather station components and recorded the details in the notebook. Date and time, temperature, cloud observations, rain report, wind speed. Leif picked up his new anemometer, the instrument that Dana had helped him build to measure wind speed. When the wind blows into these little cups, she had explained, it makes the whole thing spin quickly when the wind is blowing fast and slower when it's not. Because you know that your anemometer and my anemometer have the same components, we can compare our wind speed results. Leave it to Dana to think of everything, Leif thought. After checking the weather, he carefully recorded all the information in his weather notebook, then turned on the computer to send his report to Dana. Dear Dana, it's no fun without you. Here is my weather report for today. Time, 12.53 p.m., temperature 8 degrees, clouds none, rain none, wind speed 20. Quite strong. I'm bored. Signed, Leif. He clicked send. Before Leif could log off, the email inbox chimed. Dana was online. Leif, I'm so glad you're online. I have a new weather assignment for you. Go to the harbor and get me wind data, okay? Not just anemometer readings, but also Beaufort scale. Remember when I showed you how to use the B scale? You can use it to figure out wind speed based on what's happening around you. Report back. I think a front might be on its way to you. One other thing, the fisk we have are big goldfish, but they don't look so good. Their gills are pumping hard. Can you help? What can I do? Miss you. Signed, Dana. Leif's hair streamed back from his face as he raced against the wind. He coasted past the Little Mermaid statue at the harbor park and past the wind turbines out in the harbor that produced electricity for people of Copenhagen. He and Dana used to love coming to the harbor to watch the blades of the turbines spin like beautiful pinwheels rising out of the water. The harbor was where Dana had first taught Leif to pay attention to weather. She always pointed out the big, puffy, cumulus clouds that looked like fish, mermaids, and other creatures. Sometimes, because of the forecasting she did, she would call ahead of time and tell him to bring his kite, even when there was no breeze. 
By the time they had finished their picnic lunch, a new weather front would have moved in and there would be enough wind for flying kites. Leif hopped off his bike, gently tossing his backpack onto the ground. As he unrolled his kite and string, he looked around. White caps tipped the waves in the harbor. The leaves were tossed by the breeze and he noticed that smoke from a distant chimney was streaming out horizontally. From his practice with Dana, he had the Beaufort scale memorized. Right now, it was about four on the scale, which meant that the wind was blowing 20 to 28 kilometers per hour, about as fast as he'd been pedaling to get here. Catching the wind, his bright orange fish-shaped kite tugged at the string in Leif's hand. The air seemed to scoop it away and it took off. Watching the kite swim reminded him of Dana's new fish. She had said their gills were pumping hard. What could be the problem? He remembered the time he had almost lost a whole tank of fisk after the power went out in the house for days. After the fish tank pump had stopped working, the fish had flapped their gills furiously. That's when he learned that fish needed oxygen too, just like people. But fish take in oxygen from the water instead of from the air. The pump in the fish tank helped mixed air into the water so the fish could get more oxygen than from the water alone. Leif started towards the wind turbine blades spinning in the breeze. As a motorboat passed by, he noticed the propeller blades spinning just like the turbine blades, only they were stirring up the water behind the boat. Leif suddenly smiled. He had an idea to help Dana's fish. Leif knew he wanted to make a paddle to stir up the water in Dana's pond and give the fish more oxygen. The question was, how could he power a paddle? Leif knew just the right person to ask, his mom. She was an expert at generating electricity from the wind. Leif's mom was a mechanical engineer who worked on wind energy projects. Engineers are people who combine creativity with their knowledge of math and science to solve problems. Leif's mom helped figure out how the different parts of wind turbines and other machines could be designed so they fit and worked well together. Leif's mom liked the challenges of her job, and she liked working on teams with lots of other engineers. Leif figured that Dana's goldfish had a problem worth solving. When he got home, he found his mother in the kitchen. Mom, how could I generate energy with a windmill? He asked. His mom turned to him from her cutting board, her hair falling over one eye. What is it that you need the energy for? I want to power a paddle, a water paddle. Okay, she said. So what you really mean is that you want to change wind energy into energy that will power or move your paddle. Leif's mom was always so choosy about the words people used. You know that there's energy in the air. The hot and cold spots of air cause currents or motion. She whooshed with one hand past the other. You mean the wind? Leif asked. Yes, the wind. So the energy of the wind can be used to do something useful. Right, like turn a windmill. A windmill or a turbine, mom said. What's the difference? Leif asked. A wind turbine changes the air movement into a spinning motion that is used to generate electricity. Leif shrugged and picked a carrot stick from his mom's pile. Doesn't a windmill spin? Yes, but a windmill doesn't generate electricity. The turning motion does other things like work a grindstone to grind flour or move the parts of a water pump. It sounds like you want to do something similar to pumping water. You want to get the water moving anyway. Leif crunched the carrot. So how could I make the windmill do that? His mom put the knife down and folded her arms. That depends on a lot of things. How big will the paddle be? What materials are you using to make the windmill and the paddle? How will the windmill and the paddle be connected? Sometimes his mom could be too picky. I don't know exactly. What do you think I should do? She chuckled and tapped the tip of Leif's nose with her finger. I think you should try to figure it out. I can help you. How about if you design a plan for your windmill and build a model? An hour later, Leif's mom was leaning over him, talking a mile a minute. Oh, that's good, Leif. You got the blades to spin like a pinwheel or an anemometer. She looked surprised. Oh, yes. You must have learned that because of the VR station you and Dana set up. You're right. Pinwheels, anemometers, windmills, and turbines all have parts that catch the wind. You've got the basics down. She turned the model around to view the back of it. To get this to work outside, you'll have to think about some sturdy materials to use. Then you have to experiment with it until you find something that works. It's a big project, Leif. Leif felt like a fish swimming in a swift river of possibilities. I know it is, Mom, but I bet I know someone who can help me, Leif said, trotting off to turn on his computer. He needed to talk to Dana so the two of them could brainstorm together. Two heads are better than one, he thought. Weather Girl. Hey, 
Did you get my weather data? Fish kid. Yeah, I went over to the harbor to collect it, and while I was there, I had a great idea. We're going to send a windmill that turns a water paddle in your pond. A what? A water paddle. It can stir up the water. You know how the propellers on motorboats churn up the water in the harbor? The paddle will churn up the pond water and mix air into it, like making whipped cream with a whisk, and the windmill will power the paddle. I don't get it. How is this windmill and paddle contraption going to help the fish? The fish are sick because they're not getting oxygen. That's why Joachim and Frederick have a pump in their tank to pump air into the water. If we use a paddle to churn air in the water in your pond, the fish will get more oxygen. Great idea. So now what? Moonlight poured through the window as Leif tossed and turned. His dreams had been a fish gasping for air. He couldn't let the night go without working to rescue them. Leif slipped out of bed and crept over to his craft box. He picked up his half-made windmill from the afternoon and tried spinning the blades with his hands. It worked, but the wooden spindle was rubbing against the ragged hole cut from the cardboard carton. What was it Mom had said about that rubbing? Too much friction? It kept the blades from moving freely. Leif rummaged through the craft box for ideas. What could he put around the spindle to make it more slippery? He picked up some masking tape, felt its outer surface, and placed it inside. How about the shiny fabric? He tried that, but its fibers caught on the cardboard. At last, he found something that worked. Now that the friction was low, Leif could see other problems. The whole machine was wobbly. He wasn't sure the pinwheel-shaped blades would catch the wind well. Imagine, 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 he thought to himself, but no ideas came to him. Maybe I should sleep on it, he thought. The next morning, Leif woke up and headed to the computer. Weather Girl. My windmill is wobbly and the blades are only paper. That won't hold up outdoors. What kinds of blades did you use? Any idea what kind of wind speed we need? Fish Kid. My blades were paper too. I folded them like pinwheels. I don't know the wind speed we need, but at least you can get an idea of what kind of wind speed we can count on, right? With all your weather records, can you take a look? We just need to make the windmill so it can move a paddle in the water. Can you send me your plan? The fish are still looking sick. We've got to work fast. Leif, do you think we can really do this? I'll write up my plan and send it to you later today. I know we can do this. Just before lunch, Leif clicked send and smiled. He had managed to draw up a plan, even if it wasn't perfect. So along with his weather report, his plan was on its way to Dana. Now, each of them would build a model and test it. The results would help them tackle some of the remaining problems. An hour later, satisfaction was washing over him. The windmill blades went around so fast that they were a blur. By combining his ideas with Dana's ideas, he had designed a stable, sturdy, and reliable windmill. And what's more, he had gotten the windmill to do some work. It could lift an action figure off the floor. Now he and Dana could work on improving the design. First, they would have to find a material for the blades that worked as well as paper, but could withstand the outdoors. And then they could make a plan for what his mom would call a prototype. The prototype would be a full-size plan for a windmill that would turn a paddle to churn the water instead of lift a toy. He and Dana still had lots of emailing and designing to do, but he was encouraged that he could finish in time to save the fisk. A few days later, the wind was cool against Leif's face as he watched healthy fisk shoot forward in Dana's pond. Their tails swished. Their scales caught bright blazes of sunlight. Hey, fishies, meet your superhero, Leif, the junior mechanical engineer, Dana called tossing some crumbs into the pond. Leif laughed. You're the one who figured out how to make the windmill stand up straight. But you came up with the idea of a windmill-powered paddle in the first place, and you figured out a basic plan. All I did was help improve the prototype. I guess we're both junior engineers. Mom did say that engineers usually work in teams.